Yeah. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I started, yeah. Okay. Welcome, everyone. It's so nice to see so many gorgeous, beautiful ladies here tonight. I want to firstly thank my awesome cousin Natalie for hosting us. That and I want to give you a bracha that Hashem should bless you and your family. Amen. That this home and your family should always be blessed with great health and happiness Amen. and parnasa and shefa and bismachot. Your home should always be filled Amen. with only good things Amen. and happiness. Amen. And for your mom and your dad and your whole family. Um, I want to dedicate this uh, class to my sisters who never come to my classes and are here today, <laughs> that Hashem should bless them with a zivuk tov and a gun. And lots of great health and happiness for my mother. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, today, yeah. sure, go ahead. It's okay. Okay, so welcome to today's gathering. We are here to celebrate the really awesome month of Adar. And this year, because it's a late deep year, we get to have double Adar, which means 60 days mm -hmm. of joyfulness and happiness and good things. Amen. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why I was so excited to teach today because I want us all to be able to really tap into this like really special time of year. And I'll explain why it's um, double, why is it that we could have a double month? Um, why, why do we do that? And um, also I, I feel a special connection to this month because it's my birthday month. And so I was also born on a leap here. So I, I really feel like by a- By Slim Nahan, we got mine? 22. Oh, 22. Yeah, there's a lot of Pisces in my family. Yeah. Um, so they, it's called when there's a double adar, it's called a shana mulberet. Mulberet comes from the from the Hebrew of pregnant, it means the uh, 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 ibul, which means pregnancy. Wow. So it's it's considered a pregnant month, a double month, and so really the, it's more of like a technical reason why it happens because the Jewish calendar is based on the moon. And the secular calendar is based on the sun. And so in order to reconcile that the holidays, the Jewish holidays should always fall in specific times and seasons, like Pesach should be in the Aviv, Rosh Hashanah should be in the fall. That's why we have to do leap years every, uh, every few years, you do a leap year. So that's the technical reason. But really, Adar is the last month of the year. And so every time you're wrapping up the year, you, you're really, it's a time to like collect all the energy of the entire year. So there's really a connection between Adar and Elul because in the Torah, the, what is the first month of the year according to the Torah? Nisan. What? Nisan. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. And in the Torah, the seventh month of the year is Tishrei. But we celebrate Rosh Hashanah in the seventh month, which is Tishrei, but, but it's considered a new year, but it's really the halfway mark. So this is the 12th month, and the first month is Nisan. So we're really about to start a brand new Jewish year in the month of Nisan. So there's a connection, just like we have Elul before Rosh Hashanah, we have Adar before Nisan. So that means that Elul is known as the time when um, the king is in the field, when Hashem is close to us. And Adar is also a time when we have extra closeness to Hashem, extra blessing. And we actually see um, a connection to that in the actual name of the month is called Adar. Adar, if you break it up into two words, is Aleph, Dar. Aleph is connected to Aleph, Dalad, Nun, Yud, Adonai, Hashem. And dar is represented, is connected to dira or ladul, which means a presence to live, which means that Hashem is with us or is, his presence is with us during this month. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, uh, it's considered a, a month of extra um, mazal, it's extra mazal. So it's the luckiest month. So we learn from this also from... Um, from the Talmud and the Gemara, it says, So the question is, 
why is it that this month is a month of joy? And that's what we're going to explore today. How, how is it that this month is a month of joy and how can we connect to that? So we're going to learn how to firstly understand that happiness isn't something that just happens. You actually have to activate it. You actually have to do something about it. Just like anything in life. If you want to make something happen, you actually have to make it a priority. You have to take, make actions to, to manifest it. The same thing with happiness. So today we're going to explore some tools of how we can activate happiness in our lives. And so we learn also in the Torah that Hashem Shekhinah, the, which is Hashem's presence and blessing, only rests in a place of joy. Wherever, if you want, if you want Shekhinah in your home, your home needs to be a place of joy and a place of peace. And that when you have joy and peace in your home and in your life, the Shekhinah rests. And when the Shekhinah rests, then there's Shefa, there's Bracha, all the good things come into the home. So it's very important to, um, to do that. And Rabbi Nachman also says that, um, he says that when you're, that when you're happy, you're healthy, and when you're not healthy, health, happy, people get sick. So the, he says that there's like a direct connection between healing your body and um, happiness, and that, and that we know this also from science, which we'll talk about later in the class, that having a positive mindset and good, good vibes and good energy and, and being in a joyful state of mind contributes not only to us emotionally, but all aspects of our being, our whole being, body, mind, soul, heart, everything. Okay, so firstly, which holiday is the holiday that we have this month coming up? Sorry. Right. Right. Okay, so we're going to see how the mitzvot that we do in Purim are directly connected to happiness. So let's let's just, I want to see by a show of hands, everyone can share. What are some of the mitzvot that we do in Purim? Like what's, go ahead. <laughs> mishlach manot. Right, and what, 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 what's mishlach manot? It's giving um, to others. Exactly. That is like the number one thing that provides joy to a person in their life is when you give. People always think, oh, I want to be happy. I want to be happy. And they think all about themselves themselves. But really happiness comes when you focus on other people. Mm -hmm. And the more joy you give other people, the more joy you're going to get back in return for yourself. So mishlach manot is, is, is representing chesed, kindness, helping and giving other people. And I just learned today, actually, from my brother, he was telling me that Mishach Manot, Dafka, you're supposed to give to people that you're not, oh. that you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> that you're not, you knew that, Natalie, that you're not so close with. People that, that you want to sort of like extend like a flag of peace. <laughs> like that's your, it's a gesture of like, I want to come closer to you. I want to heal the relationship. That's, that's the purpose of Mishach Manot. Okay, thanks, Simba. What else do we do? Um, for pouring. What other means? What do we have? Yes. Read the Megillah. Exactly. So the reading the Megillah, we when we read the Megillah, is Hashem's name in the Megillah? No. no. Good. <laughs> no. No. Uh -huh. Because this whole month is um, connected to the energy of Nistal. Esther, her name means hiddenness. Hashem's name is not there, it's hidden. The sign for this month is a sign of the fish. <laughs> the fish are hidden. That, that we're supposed to, to see that, and that's also why we wear masks. That's why we wear costumes is because we're trying to show that there's the physical reality and the spiritual reality. That when we put on masks in Purim, it's not just to have fun and party, but it's to show that every day we're putting on a mask. This is my mask as a mom. This is my mom. This is my my mask as a wife. This is my mask as a as a businesswoman. This is my wife. My mask as a as a teacher. As a teacher, so like we all have different identities, different personalities, and we're we're constantly putting on masks. But who we are is way deeper than those masks right? So that's, the, that's what Purim is about. It's about showing how we need to go deep. 
We need to go deep. We need, we need to, we need to see that who we are is way more than just the external identities that we put out into the, we put out into the world. Okay. What other, what other mean hagim? What other uh, means? Well, go ahead, Natalie. Right. Zdaka. Exactly. Um, it says, um, like when, when a tzedaka has the, the most powerful, mo if anyone ever is in a rough situation, like God forbid, let's say they have to do surgery or they have to go to court or they have a big job interview. The number one thing they should do is give tzedaka, give tzedaka because tzedaka it comes from, it's connected to the Sephira of Yesod. I don't know how deep you guys want to go with Kabbalah, but I'll throw a little Kabbalah in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but, but um, there's the energy of Yesod. Yesod is all the brachot comes through Yesod. And so tzedakah is, the, is, cha is channeled through, um, um, through Yesod, meaning that um, it's, it's considered um, a way to, to release all negative energies by giving tzedakah. Wow. So what else do we do? What other means what do we do? The feast, mm. right? The seuda, the seuda. And the seuda, what are you doing in the seuda? We drink. We drink wine. We drink a lot of, we drink until we don't recognize. Exactly. Ad, ad until we don't know the difference between Mordechai and Haman. But also we're together with our families. We're together with our community, right? And that's, and that's another sign for happiness. If you want happiness, you need to be no, you need to be with your family. You need to be surrounded by your loved ones. You need to be part of the community. Ju Judaism is a very communal religion. It's very much focused on being part of a group. Um, so that's very, very important that if you want happiness in your life, you need to be part of a community. You need to have a community. Um, okay, I think we covered all of it. We did Sadaka, Seuda, the part, oh, the parties. You have to have fun. I mean, <laughs> it goes to that saying that if you want to be happy, you need to be light. You need to lighten up. Like this is the time of year where you need to just lighten up, put on the music, take out some musical instruments, have the kids do a little, you know, party and sing and dance and just have a good time. That's really super important, you know, because we're, we're, we're so caught up with our lives that we don't realize how if you, we want happiness, you actually need to make it happen. So invite people over, have some music going, have some wine if you're into that. Um, okay, so now what I'd like to do is ask you some questions. We're, gonna, we're going to have a bit of a discussion. So the first thing I wanted to ask you is, um, What's the first thing we say when we wake up every morning? So the first thing we say every morning is thank you, Hashem, mm -hmm. right? But it's not enough to just um, say thank you, Hashem. What else can we do in the morning to show gratitude? We, we thank Hashem that our body's working, that we wake up, that we're healthy, all that stuff. Now, besides the formal prayers, we can also do our own personal prayers. What I like to do, not all the time, but when I can, and I'm not like woken up by my children in the middle of the night, but like um, what I like to do is before I even get out of bed, I just think about what are three things that I'm grateful for that day. So like if I reflect on the previous day, oh, it was so wonderful to see friends from out of town the other day. Oh, it was so great. The weather was so beautiful today. Not a cloud in the sky. And it was so gorgeous. Like think of like three things that you're grateful for. So it's always important to start your day with things that make you happy because the day gets so busy and then you look back at your day, you're like, oh, I really wanted to do this. And I never, I didn't get to it. Right. So I know for myself, I always want to exercise. And I feel like a day for me, Story about life. <laughs> well, I think, well, right. I wake up every day. I'm like, oh, the weather is so gorgeous. I want to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. I want to exercise. And then I get super busy right away. And I, I'm like, okay, I'll do it later. And then I never do it. Right. 
So you always, you always have to think every day for that day, what is it that's going to make you really happy if you knock this out in that day? So start your day with the things that will make you happy. And then the rest of your day will just flow from that because you feel like, oh, I got to do that. And as I can, I can see like as women, usually it's stuff related to us, <laughs> like the self-care stuff always gets put at the end of the day, which never we get to. So try to put it at the beginning of the day. Um, okay. So what are, so that's, not, that's one practice I want you guys to do is start the day Modani, three things that you're grateful for. If you want to keep a gratitude journal, like Oprah, go for it. That's also a great thing to keep by your bedside. Um, all right. What's the difference? Oh, before, before we get to that, who, when you think of like, close your eyes and imagine the happiest person, you know, who comes to mind? Children. Exactly. <laughs> so, so why is it that kids are so happy? What is it about it, about being a child that they just have this, this, no what's that? No worries. No worries. No worries. Absolutely what yeah so we're all supposed to be like children right because children they get upset if anything i feel like kids get way more upset than adults do they cry a lot more than they let you know they're very frustrated the kids have it hard too you know it's not easy to be a kid especially when they get into school da, da, da. it's not easy to be a kid but they're still super happy why because that's our natural state we're all supposed to be happy. That's supposed to be our, no matter what, we're supposed to be happy. Happy that we're alive, happy that we're breathing, happy that Hashem chose us to come into the world to do our work, happy that we have love in our lives, happy that we have friends, happy that we have amazing family and teachers and all that stuff. And we have a roof over our head, happy that we have food on the table, so many things to be happy for. Right. And so with kids, they don't need to sit there and do that list. <laughs> They're just, it's just there, right? They're connected to their, their soul. So when you, whenever you think about that and you're in a place of like, oh, it's hard for me to get happy, just close your eyes and imagine the happiest person you know and try to get into that space. Okay. Let me ask you a question. What's the difference between lasting happiness and short-term happiness? Why is, there, why is it that sometimes you can be happy for an extended period of time and sometimes you're like happy and then sad, happy and then sad. Like why, what, what makes the difference between happiness that lasts a long time and happiness that's short-lived? <laughs> What's your name? Yeah. Anna, what, what were you saying? The state of mind. <laughs> Go on. What do you mean by that? I, don't know. I feel like as, as humans, we, it's, it's hard to explain because we think that outside, um, you know, people blame things on things. You know, oh, I'm, ha I'm happy because of this or I'm happy because of that. But I think we as humans have control over what we allow to affect us. A hundred percent. Yeah. And it's so right on what you're saying is that the way I frame it is like, we can either be externally directed where like the outside world can dictate for us. Oh, today we're going to be happy because the stock market went up today. We're going to be happy because I got a big check in the mail today. We're going to be happy because the weather is gorgeous. It's all external outside, outside versus being inner directed where you're like, I'm happy from inside. I don't need those outside things to dictate to me whether today's going to be a good day or not a good day. I, I decide. It's up to me to decide if I want to be happy because happiness at the end of the day is a choice. You choose to be happy. And so like you were saying, it's a, it's a state of mind. But what happens when things come up and things are challenging? How can you maintain your happiness when things come up that are difficult and are negative or challenging or, or hard to deal with, how do you maintain your happiness when that happens? You don't have to answer. I'm just saying, putting it out to the, to the crowd. What do you guys, how, how do you think it's possible to maintain happiness while going through challenging times? Emuna. Emuna? Go on. 
Right. And what and that when things come up, you say everything is from Hashem, right? And and you and you realize that everything is for the good. Even if you don't you don't understand it, you don't know why it's happening, but you believe that it's for the good. Also, I I like I I call this copy. Um sorry, I just I call this copy and paste. So like, you know how when you look back at certain things in your life from like 10 years ago, you're like, oh, thank God I stopped dating that person or thank God I didn't go on that trip or thank God. Like, but in, at the moment when you were going through it, you're like, oh, I really wish I would have gone on that trip. I really wanted to go. Why is this happening to me right now? And then fast forward a few months later, you're like, oh, thank God I didn't go. All these people got sick on the plane to it or whatever. So, so if you can be in that mindset in the time when it's happening and just say, oh, I've had many experiences in my life where I got upset and in the end it was for the good, it's possible that this is also for the good and let me just wait and see what's going to happen, wait and see how this turns out for the good. One of my mom's um, famous saying, my mom's famous saying is, kora kavala tova right? Like every delay is for, it's one of my favorite things she says, <laughs> like if, if whatever happens, it's, it's good. It's for the good, especially like, you know, you get delayed on a trip or, you know, you don't know, like tons of things that happen that you're like, oh, thank God I, I wasn't you there. The you you, or, right. Like exactly. Like the big things like that. Um, so it's all, all, it's like, she, like Anna, was it your name? Anna? Mm -hmm. Like Anna said, it's all about your state of mind. You choose how to when things come at you you choose how to to interpret it how to to take perceive it exactly okay so what are some of the things that get in the way of you being happy if you already know this is what it takes to be happy i know what i have to do but but things come up what are the things that get in the way or or obstacles in, in becoming happy on a regular basis, what would you say are some of the things that get in the way? What about our emotions, right? When something bad happens, no matter how, how much amuna you have and all this, you know, mindset stuff, when things happen, do we get emotional? Yeah. Do we get upset? Do we get angry? Do we get reactive? Do we yell? All that stuff. Does that happen? Yeah. Okay. So is that something that we'd rather not happen? <laughs> right? We'd rather not be reactive, but that's that's a that's a real thing, getting emotionally reactive to situations. And then um what are other things that that get in the way? Life. Well, this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <Life>. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So there's always going to be, there's always going to be something that gets in the way of, um, of happiness. So it's, it's about, it's about, there's a difference between emuna and bitachon. Who knows what the difference is? Faith and confidence. That's good. Yeah, that's, a, that's good. Yeah, that's a really good. No, that's really good. Right. It's like emuna is like the the mindset. Bitachon is like you're acting on it. Like you're actually you're you're like leaning into it. It's like let's say um, let's say you go to someone like to to heal you, like a healer or a doctor or someone like that. Right. You have if you want it to work, you have to surrender. You have to be vulnerable. You have to let go and just say, I trust you completely. And that's how it is with bitachon. Emunah is like you get it, but bitachon is like you embody it. You're living it. It's it's in you. You're like, I surrender that it, it's for it's for the good. You just surrender. It's not just like an idea, it's something that is you live it, right? That's bitachon. Okay, so I want to talk about how we can actually implement happiness into our lives what are four what are the four wheels that that make this this car move the, of happiness there's four wheels right there's the physical aspect 
the spiritual aspect, the, the emotional, and the intellectual. All four aspects of our being have to be prioritized. So when you say, I want to be happy, I want happiness in my life, you actually have to, to take action. You have to have small goals, right? Small things that you do. Every day you do small things. And after a while, all those small things add up and that equals happiness. Okay, so we're going to start with our physical, <laughs> the physical aspect of our lives, because that's the part that pulls us the most. What are some physical things we can do that will make us happy? Exercise. Correct. Self-care, exercise. Um, and ex Go ahead, Natalie. What's that? Praying. Yeah, yeah, but the, I'm taught that's the spiritual. We're going to get to praying. We're, we're talking now just the physical, physical stuff we can do to help us make, be happy. <laughs> She's right. She's right. Absolutely. What about dancing? Who likes to dance here? Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know dancing shop shopping okay wait don't go there wait 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 because i am also into like retail therapy but but <laughs> you want to do everything in boundaries right like everything in boundaries okay we don't want to get too caught up with the physical but i agree shopping um also eating healthy right have you noticed how good you feel when you eat healthy versus when you eat not healthy? <laughs> Natalie's like, not so much. <laughs> I, I can say for myself, 100%. I feel a major, yeah, a major difference when I eat on track versus not. You know, your body speaks to you. It's about listening to your body and understanding what, how to make the right choices. Also, physically, being outside, like being in nature, being at the beach, going for a hike, um, going for riding a bicycle, walking, just moving your entire body makes you happy. It activates uh, endorphins and all these um, hormones that, that um, and oxytocin and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, next. So we did the physical, now let's go to the other end, spiritual. What are spiritual things we can do that will make us happy? Happy says praying. Okay. What kind of praying do you like to do, Kathy, that makes you happy? Yeah. You like to Kuna Kali? Same. You also like that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, what else? That I love Tehilim also. When you say Tehilim, do you have people in mind that you're praying for? Uh, praying for everyone. Okay. But you, when you have in mind, what is it just you're praying just for yourself or do you have in mind other people? that you think and, okay great and what other things can we do that are spiritual that could help us feel good and happy help people. absolutely helping people for sure it's a high it's a i used to yeah it's a high you get from from um i used to volunteer at a hospital a long time ago um, and even if you're not doing anything, you're just there. And if you open the door for someone who's sick, just like doing something simple like that, you're like, oh, that felt so good. <laughs> you know, like little things like as cheesy as it sounds, being at the market and helping the old people reach because I'm tall. So like reaching, you know, people always ask me to reach for things in the supermarket. Um, little things like that. If you're always looking as ways, ways to do chesed, I know Natalie is very into chesed. When, you, when you're around in a community, like we were saying before, a community that does chesed, it really energizes you to do that. We have another community with a girl where one homeless lady. She's sleeping now in shul. Oh, wow. Yeah. And every Shabbat we have to do to the shul with a food. During the week also, the, every morning, the men come to pray, they put a tzedakah, they give it to her. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. So we have to give her clothes. And wow. Take care of her. I love that. She's sleeping now. At know, the shul. At the shul, yeah. She wow. That's so nice. That's so incredible. Nice. I love that. Um, also, learning Torah, like what we're doing now. You know, especially women, when women get together and learn Torah, there's like extra energy because women are more like heart centered. 
So the, the kind of Torah that we like, or I should say I like, is uh, in general, like about love and caring and kindness. And it's not as much like, oh, this source said that, or that source said that, you know, it's not as like, even though I have all that stuff for, for the nerds here who want the intellectual, I have that too. But I feel like women gravitate more towards heart-centered learning. And then... Um, and by the way, one of the things that we learn from the Purim Megillah is the power of prayer, because that's how the miracle happened when Esther asked the Jewish people to fast for three days and to pray for her for three days, because she was going to go to the king and, the, and, and she could have gone killed. But she asked them to pray for three days. So when people come together and pray together, the critical mass makes a huge impact. Okay, and then obviously meditation right? Meditation is very, very good, not just for our, our mind, but also for our body. It helps us feel calm. It helps us feel centered. Also, what's very, very powerful about meditation, which is connected to the theme we spoke about earlier about the masks, is that when you meditate, um, you, you start to see that all, a lot of your thoughts, your thoughts are not you, right? That we always have different types of thoughts that come into our mind, positive thoughts, negative thoughts, all sorts of ideas and thoughts. But there's our neshama is looking and our neshama chooses, okay, this is a negative thought. I'm putting this to the side. I don't want this negative thought. Here's a positive thought. Okay, let me follow that. Let me see that. You know, so it's about, it's about meditation is really about creating, it's, it's the ego, it's the separation between the neshama, the soul and the ego that we can see this is our identity, this is the mask, and that's what's giving us these negative ideas and thoughts. And this is my neshama, and I'm gonna decide what comes into my life. What am I gonna allow to be part of my, my thoughts? Um, and then we have the intellectual. What are intellectual ways that we can be happy? How can we keep ourselves happy intellectually? Deep conversations, with friends. deep conversations, reading books. What did you say, Kathy? Learning new subjects. Exactly, learning. I, I, learning, language. learning a new language. Exactly, like keeping our mind, and also um, sometimes learning a new skill, like playing piano or guitar or a new sport, even like anything that activates your your mind. Okay, and then if, if the emotional, social, I kept for the, the last, because that's the most fun. Like, how can, we, how can we keep ourselves happy emotionally and socially? What are some things that we can do so that we can be happy? We can always feel happy and also socially be happy. What, are, what would be some examples? Well, right. No, <laughs> no. Well, you could. I know exactly. There you go. So laughing yes. is it? That's that's like the number one thing. It's actually the the chush, the sense for this month. Every month of of the year has a specific chush that you're supposed to work on. So the sense of humor is is the focus for this month. You're supposed to laugh a lot. You're just supposed to laugh, whether it's funny, or not funny, just laugh. You just fake it until you make it. You know, you just have to be light and flowy and just silly, you know? And if you're a parent, this is a really good time to just be playful. Just be playful with your kids, you know, and just have fun with them and not worry about them being perfect or doing this right or that right or homework or grades or it doesn't matter. Just be playful because those are the things that really create the emotional bond is play with kids. Um, also, when it's about quality time, you know, like when you're with friends and family, don't make it about things. Don't make it about, oh, we have to go out to dinner or, oh, we have to go out shopping or like make it about the meaningful experiences rather than about meaning than about things. Um, okay, so now I wanna talk about some Kabbalah and astrology. Who's up for that? Okay, so Kabbalah teaches us that the Jewish, cal the Jewish calendar and the way that Hashem created the world was through the Hebrew letters. And so the Hebrew letters for this month are, who can read that? 
Kuf Gimel. Kuf and Gimel. Okay, so Kuf is the letter that controls the sign of this month, which is Pisces. And Gimel is the letter that controls the planet of Jupiter. So I can see from the faces in the group that you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but, but basically what Kabbalah teaches is that when Hashem created the world, he used speech, right? Hashem said, um, everything was created through speech. And speech that Hashem used was the holy language, the Hebrew language, the Shona Kodesh. So the Hebrew language is made up of Hebrew letters. And so the Hebrew letters are not just words of communication, they're actual spiritual forces. And so when people meditate on specific letters, they're really activating the energy of the letter. So what that means is like, for example, the letter Gimel is connected to good luck. Okay, so this is a month of lots of mazal tov. It's a really good time to do new things, to, to, to try new things, to get married, um, to start a new job. It's really like a time of goodness. Like it's the same, it's the same energy of miracles as Hanukkah. Hanukkah is also ruled by the letter Gimel. So it's, it's a time of, of miracles. So you're saying Adar is... Yeah, Adar. And so sometimes... Um, well, we know about Adar, you know how like in the astrology you have 12 signs and you have water signs. What are the other? There's water, earth, earth fire, 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 and air. air. So Pisces is water. water. So water, what do we know about water? Water absorbs energy, right? If you've ever gone to Babasali, right? You go to Babasali, they give you the alak with the, with the blessed alak and it's like you, you drink that alak, it's like holy. You're like, how could this this holy holy alcohol or holy water how could that be because water absorbs energy and so water water um, we people are made up of 72 percent of our body is made of water so it's very important for us to understand Ima, it's very important for us to understand the the energy of water so i'm going to show you something really cool so there was a study um, that was done on water and it showed how when people meditated on water with different ideas, they meditated on compassion, um, uh, gratitude, uh, wisdom, truth, and that look at these beautiful crystals, right? And when, when people meditated, hold on, I have to see, there's another page. When people meditated on all these beautiful concepts, all of a sudden the water crystals took on these beautiful shapes. And when they meditated on negative um, things like hate or anger or whatever, the shapes were like these weird, ugly shapes. So what that was, was trying to show is that we get, we get affected because we're made up of water too, that we're sensitive to thoughts. That it's not just, so Kal V'chomer, if we're sensitive to thoughts, Kal V'chomer, like how more so we're sensitive to, to words, to actions, to emotions. So we, we are constantly absorbing energy from all around us, right? So that's what um, this sign, the water sign, Pisces, they're very sensitive. Who here is a Pisces? You're a Pisces, tell us Pisces. No, 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 so this, this, so this sign is, is, is and, and actually the most famous Pisces is Moshe Rabbeinu. He actually today was his um, Hilula of the seventh of Adar was today was Moshe Rabbeinu. So Pisces, so Pisces are people, yeah, Pisces. And what was Moshe Rabbeinu known, known for? His, no, his anava, his humility, right? Because with Pisces, with, with water signs, Pisces are people that, oh, they just want to give, right? Water flows. So it's people just want to give, they're, they're givers. But sometimes, it's very hard for me to speak over you. Um, but sometimes when you're a giver, people take advantage. So Pisces, yes. it's chesed, but without gevura. So, so Pisces, they have to know gevura. They need to know limits, boundaries. So that if you're, no. Pisces, if somebody's cold and they have a jacket, they'll take their jacket off and give it to you, give it to them, and they'll be cold. Mm -hmm. That's Pisces, right? Like overly generous, overly giving, over too much. 
right? Because they, they're just naturally, that's their, some people have to work on being kind. They have to work on oh. being generous. Mm -hmm. This is, this is the opposite sign. They have to work to not be too kind, not be too generous because they're just so loving, oh. so caring, so sensitive, right? So the thing is with, with this sign is, yeah, you have to stop. Yes. And you have, to, yes. And you have to have a, and you have to have a filter and to know what types of people to surround yourself with, right? Because when you're so sensitive, you absorb the energy of other people. Scorpio, that's also water. But that's the most intense sign. I never teach a class about Scorpio because it's the craziest sign. And it's like really intense. Even though I have a Scorpio moon, so I know totally what Scorpio is about, but I never teach about Scorpios because everyone will hate me if I teach that class. But um, so this, who knows? Who knows what the symbol Masiman Pisces? Who knows what the symbol of Pisces is? So the symbol of Pisces is two fish in opposite directions, right? So fish, um, fish is. Can you? Can I have some coke? I'm feeling a little dizzy. Um, so fish represents lacha, right? No, I'm okay. I just I'm fine. Um, fish represents lacha. So why are the two fish one in, in two one in one direction, right? One represents the physical world, and one represents the spiritual world. One represents the hiddenness, and one represents the hidden, the revealed. That that Pisces they go deep. If you ever sit down with a Pisces, they like deep conversations. They're not superficial people, right? They go deep right away. But, but it's our job. A Pisces is the last sign because they're the most spiritual sign. They're the most refined sign. It's like the end of the cycle, right? So their job is to um, infuse um, holiness into the physical, right? That's your job is to fuse the holiness into the physical that you see Hashem in everything. You see Hashem in everything. And of Nuvado, everything, everything is Hashem. You see the oneness, the unity in everything. So they're very, very spiritually enlightened. Okay. They're double, right? They're like, they, they're, they go back and forth. They, they're like, they love this world and they hate this world. They like back and forth, meaning like, they're, they can be very spiritual, but they can also be very superficial. So they have like that, it's like a double sign. Okay, so. It's like a Gemini. Exactly. So that's why Pisces get along with Geminis. So, so one of the things, this is gonna be a discussion right now for us as a group. One of the things that I wanna explore together as a group is that when the, the fish represents the hiddenness, right? What are the things that are inside of us that have been buried that we want to bring to the surface what were things that when we were little we loved so much was it music was it dancing was it art was it science was it reading was it writing what were the things that we really really loved as a child and like we said earlier children are always happy because they're always connected to their neshama they're just always expressing who they are and then as we get older we get far away from that so think about what are things that you had as a kid that you really wanted to do and then as you got as as you became an adult, you put it on the side because you're like, oh, that's not a profession. That's not something to like, you know. So this is a time when you're supposed to revisit that. You're supposed to go deep. You're supposed to explore aspects of yourself that have been hidden for a really long time and to like really reflect on that, right? So for example, if you, if you are like, oh, someday, one day in the future when my kids are in college, you know, I'll do this, this, no. Think, think of something that you don't want to wait 20 years to do it, right? Do you want to go back to school? Do you want to go to college? Do you want to get it? Like, what is it that you want to do? So we're going to do that now as a group. I'd love for anyone here to share. What are some things that, okay, Natalie, go for it. So, so <laughs> the question is, what is something that was a passion that you had or a gift or a talent that you had as a child and you as an adult you put it aside and you were like oh i'll get to that later and how can you bring that back to your life go ahead 
not from childhood, but I always had a passion. I did accounting for 20 years. Yeah. And when I had my daughter a year and a half ago, I said I want to do something more meaningful or something that is not just money. And I had good money in accounting, but I wanted something more of the passion. Yeah. And ever since I can remember myself, I always did hair for everybody and a manicure and waxing and, you know, and I love making people feel good about themselves. So about, um, I want to say four months ago, about four months ago, I went to school and I became an esthetician. Wow. It was a dream. Mazal <laughs> Mm-hmm. So anyway, so I feel like right? I really feel like um, um, it's complete, like a like a real passion. And every time somebody comes and leaves, yeah, you know, after a treatment, they always say the same thing. They say you have the touch, and it feels like you're doing it from your heart. Yes, every single client or whatever, they always say the same thing yeah. to me, and it makes me feel so good because this is what I wanted to make yes. me feel good and beautiful. So yeah. That's, That's awesome. awesome. And I had a lot of support from girls in the neighborhood. Yes. Friends, so cousins. Cousins. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would agree. You definitely feel that you're living your passion when mm-hmm. you're doing it. It's, it's so really... Childhood, like, like yeah, yeah. Something that you want to do. Young adult, yes. Do. That's beautiful. I love that. That's awesome. Thank you, Natalie. Anybody else like to share? What is something that you've, you were really into before and you're thinking about connecting to now? We spoke about this. Go ahead. Uh, piano lessons. Yeah. Uh, as a kid, I I always wanted to learn. My mom said that she brought it up, and she said I wasn't interested, which I don't like. I don't. I think it's weird. Yeah. And uh, a few years ago, I got into it. I bought a keyboard. I got an instructor. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So. And do you feel like it really like fills you up? Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy I enjoy music a lot. Like that's my that's amazing. Yeah. It's so fun. It's a uh, a passion. Music. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm not good, but uh, <laughs> I enjoy. It. It's like you're doing for its for its own sake. Yeah. Anybody else want to share? Anybody else want to share something? Poppy, you want to share? Oh. Yeah, go ahead. I remember that. Anybody? What about you? Any of the ladies back there? Anything you want to share? Rachel, Ali Sheva. Yes, what are you doing? Though? You're not sure yet. So then this is a good time to reconnect to that. This is the time to go to this is the time to reflect and think about it. I've been thinking about taking the dancing classes. Oh, I love that. Go ahead. What did you say? Yes. 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 Well, that one second. Well, that's that's where. Remember the exercise we did earlier about connecting to your happiness from four different aspects. That sometimes when you don't have clarity, that's when you need to like um, journal or meditate or pray, pray to Hashem. To I know for me, I have I have like a mantra that I say whenever I'm like meditating. That um, I actually learned from Wayne Dyer, where how how can I serve? How can I serve? How can I be a channel for Hashem? Whatever it is, because at the end of the day, we're all here to serve as channels for Hashem, right? We are all aspects of Hashem. We're all made in Hashem's image, right? And we're all here to reveal some something that is an aspect of Hashem. And what is unique? We all need to know what our gift is. 
And just like what Natalie was saying, how when, when she discovered her gift, she, people reflected back to her that that is her gift. So what a lot of times we can know what our gift is because people usually mirror back to us and say, oh, you're really good at this, or that was amazing. You should do that more. So that's also a good way to, to get some cl clarity on something to to pursue i know there's a lot of people that are multi-talented and oh, that's and it's hard to sometimes it's easier to just have one talent but when you're multi-talented it's hard to choose but you just you choose one thing and you build on that success and then you move on to the next thing right <laughs> that's true um I think we'll wrap it up. Just yeah. one more thing I wanted to um, to say about um, when Rabbi Nachman was uh, saying mitzvah gadol liot v'simcha tamid, right? There's a whole song, mitzvah gadol liot v'simcha tamid. And it's like, how can it be a mitzvah to be v'simcha? How can Hashem tell us to have an emotion? You can't push a button that says, here I am, I'm going to be happy now. It doesn't work like that. So how is it possible to, go ahead. Yeah, I love that because what you're saying is, um, is something really, really important. What you're saying, Rachel, is that we always have a choice to be happy, right? When you're when you're connecting, slicha, when you're connecting to your higher self, right? When you're when you're connected to your neshama, right? And you know that this is who I truly am. Like I know, for example, when I get upset sometimes with my kids, I'm like, that's not me. Who was that? Who just got upset? At? That was not me. My higher self is looking at me like, why'd you do that? You know, but we can judge ourselves, especially as mommies, right? We do the best that we can. But when you're connected to your higher self, you're, you say, no, I'm not going to react. I'm going to pause before reacting and say, how can I shift my state? How can I shift from being in a reactive, emotionally negative state and choose to be in a positive state? And so like what you were saying, you do yoga or you turn on music. For some people, they just open up a page of a book that's inspiring. Just reading those words of inspiration lifts you up. Or you push a button and you listen to a Torah class for like 10 minutes, mm -hmm. just listening to some inspiration that shifts you. So you're always in control. You're in control, right? And you say, okay, I choose now to not react. I choose to shift the energy quickly. And how can I shift my energy? I'm going to input something that will take me to that space of being positive. And one of the things I was going to teach, but we're running late, is just how it's about vibration, right? That we are souls and souls are, and everything in this world is made out of energy. And emotion is energy in motion, right? And so we can decide which vibration do we want to be on? Do we want to be in high vibrations or low vibrations? So when a person gets angry or upset or sad or depressed, they're vibrating on a low frequency. They're connecting to a very low level frequency to the life force, which is the energy of the universe, which is the energy of Hashem. But when a person vibrates on a higher frequency, when they're in a state of compassion and love and, and music and spirituality and Torah and, and volunteering, you're vibrating in a higher state, then that's, you're, you're being a channel. You're, it's like, it's like a vessel, we're the vessel, right? And it's like our cup. Our cup could either be really teeny tiny and we're only allowing a small amount of light to come in and that's being in a low vibration or we can open up our vessel and have a bigger cup and have more light coming in and that's being in a higher vibration. And it's always up to us to decide which vibration do we want? Which energy do we want to connect to? Do we want to draw from the high, holy, positive, good vibes energy or do we want to draw from the lower energy that is negative so i'm going to wrap up the class 
And I'm going to say, I bless you all that in the month of Adar, you should only connect to good vibes, good people, good times, and there should just be flowing, overflowing of brachot to all of you and your families. Of great health, I mean, of great health, happiness, panasah, shefa, brachot, chinuch tov for our children. Everything should be good. Zivuk tov, shalom bayit. And, um, and then we should always know that we're here to serve and that we all have something special to bring into the world and that Hashem has blessed us with the best mazal ever. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you.